Welcome to Infinite Surface, Fat Stack, Episode 2, Michael Hampton's Figure Drawing, Design, and Invention. This book is really one of my favorite books to use to learn about drawing volumes and figure drawing. Uh, if we take a look inside, this figure drawing book starts like a lot of figure drawing books do. Most anatomy books and figure drawing books have a lot of the same content, but in different proportions. So you can see here, a drawing like this looks a lot like a drawing that you might find in Mike Matisse's Force book, uh, which is based on uh, cascading ellipses and animation principles. And if we go a little bit farther, we see that laid out in more detail. And these are really great descriptions and examples of that kind of concept. Um, and it goes and leads right into gesture drawings. Um, and already you can see some of the structure that is really most important in a book like this. Um, this book, I think, is uh, primarily useful for how it is that it brings you through a figure construction uh, methodology. Um, so here where we start to get to, you know, primary volumes and how that relates to anatomical principles. And again, you see the, the reference to the cascading ellipse. Um, this is where we really start to get to the meat of the book. Um, and we have here a nice little example of how to create different constructions, a box construction method, kind of uh, rib cage and, and pelvic block. Uh, like egg shape and, and block shape uh, here, rounding off that block shape. So you see a lot of different ways to think about construction here. It's not a very limited book. Um, and then even here, these diagrams are really nice for just different ways to think about the pelvis. It's just a nice little uh, way to uh, see different conceptualizations of the pelvis, right? Like a little bit more detail, a little bit more structure in each one might be useful in different poses. Um, so then we have a little bit of talk about lighting and simple lighting, um, simple lighting concepts that help you establish form. Um, that's really important too, to be able to you know, draw form on the page. Um, so when we get to this area here, it starts to get a little bit anatomical. This is where he starts talking about, uh, bony landmarks, um, and what, Michael Hampton thinks are the most essential landmarks to kind of identify in the figure. Um, and this is pretty standard. Like you can find this information in most books. Um, but the way he lays it out is, is really handy and really nice. Uh, there, there's um, something quite clear about it. Um, I find this book to be really clear. It's really, really well laid out. Um, and if you kind of follow it A to Z and, and make, you know, copy these drawings and make versions of your own, um, I think you'll find it quite useful for understanding how to construct the figure with this kind of, um, with this kind of method. So if we skip forward a little bit, um, I want to get to the part where he does start to discuss volume, right? And so here we have him discussing forms and connections. And again, you know, I think, um, Bridgman is is really one of the most clever people to discuss wedging and passing, as Bridgman calls it. But um, you know how it is that that one shape interlocks and intersects with another. Um, so here we see primary form um, just kind of being inserted into another primary form, like a rectilinear form into an egg shape, and that that's a really functional thing for like a forearm or a knee or something like that. Um, or even an, uh, an abdomen and a rib cage or something like that, that would be foreshortened. So this is a really great shape to learn how to draw. Um, here you see that kind of happening with like the abdomen and the rib cage and the pelvis or something like that. Um, but uh, the way in which Bridgman sort of um, uh, draws and stylizes this kind of interaction between these two shapes is the thing that's really special about Bridgman. Um, so, you know, here you can see him uh, you know, using those primary forms, but creating more complicated interlocks or intersections. Um, but when we come to this kind of part of the book where he starts breaking down individual anatomies into simplified forms, um, and especially when we get to, uh, the, the torso and the arms and, and things like that, like these kind of pages here, 
Um, these are just really great simplified breakdowns of, of how to think about going about volumetrically establishing this stuff. Um, and so these simplifications are, are really useful and I think are a good kind of companion to something like Bridgman, where the, the form and the and the the shape and the origin and the insertion and all that stuff can kind of be lost a bit in the stylization of the mark making. So here it, it's so clear that maybe it's a little bit less beautiful than Bridgman's drawings, but it's more clear, right? So I think this is a good way to sort of start um, understanding these forms. And then if you go and move over to Bridgman, you can start thinking about like how to how to draw those forms fancy. But these are great layouts for how the how the pectoralis works, how it stretches, um, you know, how you see it like in more um, value filled drawing, um, you know, here like even something like this where it, where it's really more structural on one side and a little bit more naturalistic on the other. Um, really great way to sort of juxtapose um, the different approaches that he has. So I really, I really love this book. I, I carried it around with me for a couple of years, actually. Um, and anytime I would go figure drawing on the break, whenever I felt like I had a problem that I couldn't quite solve or that I couldn't quite see well enough, I would open up this book and try to find some kind of structural answer to how I could represent that, that problem. And, you know, I love stuff like this as a kind of amendment to, uh, um, Loomis's or Pex or or um, whoever's kind of um, rib cage construction. Um, I, I like this kind of like shoulder block that he has as a simplification. I, I find it more more rounded, right? Like the, I don't I don't think that these should be at that angle, but instead should be sort of tilted forward. Um, and that concept comes across in this book, which is not right here in this simplification. Um, but. That's a really nice one to sort of start to get the understanding. These drawings of abdomen are really great. Um, and I love, let me see. Yeah, like these kind of uh, uh, stretching abdomens here and crunching abdomens there. That's one thing that's really kind of, in a way, like missed where the crunch and stretch concept is, you know, can be quite obvious as a, as a figure um, leans from side to side. But crunch and stretch also happens when it leads forward, right? Like it's stretching in the back and crunching in the front or, cr you know, crunching in the back and stretching in the front. So the crunch and stretch should sort of be happening in, in all directions. This is a really great diagram for the abdomen. Um, these are things really worth copying and, and, and really worth, um, you know, trying to reverse and trying to reinvent, just trying to be able to do it on your own terms so that you can see it when you're figure drawing. Um, that this is a great kind of description of the uh, latissimus dorsi. I, I love the way he shows that kind of wrapping around and it's not uncommon. You can find this right in Peck, um, same kind of drawing, same kind of simplification. Um, just here, it's so mechanical, it's so structural and the transparency is really nice. So you can see the entirety of the rib cage egg. Um, so all that is really good. And I like this simplification of the arrow here for the, for the sacrum. That's really nice. So here again, like the drawings are not so lovely, right? They look like robots, they look like transformers, but I think that that's a good way to be drawing for a while is like super structurally, right? So that you get that structure in there and then you get something more nice, more lovely later when you kind of tone this down. Um, but especially when you're learning to draw shapes in space, this is a, a great way to be drawing uh, and great way to be constructing. So here he starts to get into um, anatomy and, and design and, and different concepts around that. And, and he has some, some parts later in the book. I'm not sure why that poked itself in just there kind of systematically in this book. But um, there's some parts later in the book that, that focus on design or light and shadow or something like that. Um, and these are, you know, these are kind of like footnotes, again, just, just discussing in a little bit more detail how to establish form or... Um, how to how to approach certain things with like more gestural line works or something like that. Um, so it's just I think an effort to be kind of comprehensive. Um, but this book definitely doesn't focus on that kind of stuff. Um, you can see it's just a few pages at the end. Um, and you know maybe someday he'll he'll make a whole book on on that kind of stuff and and kind of elaborate you know labor the point or elaborate on it. Um, but you know, th this I think is the is the draw of the book. Pages like this, where 
you really see this kind of like construction and you, and you get a sense of, of how it is that you can build this stuff from the ground up. And it really gives you a way at, as a sort of, um, almost as if you have an internal CAD program in your mind and, and you want to be able to, to rotate and, and turn and foreshorten all of these forms just like from invention. That's why I think it's a good title, right? From invention. Um, so I think that's the, that's the main takeaway here is like, you know, if you can get these structures in um, from these gestures or these kind of um, initial diagrammatical shapes, to these kind of structural volumetric shapes, uh, then I think you've really gotten your value out of this book. Um, these things are, are, are really, really useful. So like I said, you know, I carried this around for years um, and, and really just drew and drew from it and I used it to problem solve so much. Uh, it's got a lot of answers in this book about how to, how to make dimensional what you're trying to make dimensional. Um, so in, in my last couple of classes, I, I've been going over a similar concept of foreshortened leg, uh, and, and trying to draw the structure of that rectilinear form of the, of the kneecap kind of inserting itself into this kind of egg shape of the hamstring and the quadricep muscles, and then into the ball of the rib cage block there, um, that kind of like one, two, three form stacking, um, that this, this kind of stuff is really top notch here. Um, and then again, like getting a little bit more detailed, a little bit more naturalistic, um, a little bit more anatomical here, as opposed to just straight up structural. Um, these are, these are great things to kind of contrast. And, and the idea is, well, how do you move from this to, to that, right? If, if this is your goal, um, how do you kind of start here and lay in the structure and the overall value system so that you can see the shapes? And then ultimately get yourself somewhere like here, where the drawing and the and the and the kind of like detail of the anatomy can really shine. Um, so you know, again, like this is an anatomy book, and and I think if I'm not wrong, in the first couple of pages, he makes a point to be like, this is not an anatomy book, um, but there's enough anatomy in it, and stuff like this is is really perfectly clear. And when we were looking at Stephen Roger Peck's. Uh, Atlas of Anatomy for Artists, um, that was one of the things that, not that I criticized, but I said, you know, those high render drawings of, of, of flayed figures were, were not the most useful um, because they really highlighted the, the rendering rather than the simplification of the anatomy. So here's where the separation of the anatomy is super clear. It's color coded. Um, and you can see stuff like this, like when, when Will Weston draws on his great Instagram and Facebook page, uh, and Will Weston has great, um, uh, I think, figure drawing classes that, that focus on this kind of construction methodology. Um, he does the same thing, right? He's kind of co color coding all of these uh, muscle groups or, or individual muscles so that you can just see them really clearly. And, and this is just a great way to understand, I, I think, um, more so than you can see obviously in Peck, how these things are spiraling around the major thrust of the form, right? So if the major thrust of the lower leg is just a straight line up and down, you can really see how these shapes are spiraling across that shape. And I, I love this book for that because it really just lays out how that works um, and, and does it in a simple and clear way. So uh, I would really recommend getting this. I, I, you know, I think any book that I go over in this series, um, uh, I, would, I would recommend having in, in book form, uh, not like in digital form, but in book form and recommend carrying around with you and reading through. Um, but this is one that I think um, really has a, a, a great um, value for providing you structural answers. Um, so, so this is one that I'd really recommend, uh, getting in book form and sort of keeping in your backpack. Uh, you know, the other ones might be more anatomical or more for practicing drawing or something like that at home. But this is the one that I would recommend keeping with you while you're doing figure drawing for the times when the model's on break so that you can go back and troubleshoot whatever it is that you're having trouble with. Um, so that is Michael Hampton's figure drawing, design, and invention. Highly recommended. This concludes our look into Michael Hampton's figure drawing, design, and invention. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it, and subscribe for updates about future episodes. 
Our next episode will feature a look into Mike Matizzi's Force, Dynamic Life Drawing for Animators, for Episode 3 of Infinite Surfaces, Fat Stacks. Mm-hmm.